everyone. Today we're going to begin our investigations on life sciences, living organisms. What are some examples that you have of living organisms? Well, us humans are living organisms. Plants, animals, bacteria, yeast. These are all different types of living organisms. What I have in front of me, cup of seeds. Are these seeds living? Yes, they are. We've learned this before. Seeds are living, but they are dormant. They are, they are asleep and they need to be woken up. Now, what do seeds need to wake up? That's right, water. The essential requirement for all living organisms. They all need water. We've done this experiment before where we will add some water and we can watch the seeds sprout. But is that enough? Is water enough for the seeds just to start growing? Well, no. We know that plants and trees go through a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process where they take water, light, and carbon dioxide and they turn that into sugar usable sugar where they the plants couldn't consume which is their food and they also produce oxygen without sunlight plants would not be able to produce sugar they would not be able to go through photosynthesis it's very important that we acknowledge this now we don't give plants food because they make their own food. They actually make food for us as well. We're able to eat a variety of different types of plants. I have some seeds here that we're going to plant in just a minute. And we're going to talk about the different factors that are involved when we are planting seeds. What am I going to plant my seeds in? Soil, that's right. What am I going to provide for my plants? Well, they need air. They need the carbon dioxide in the air to be able to do photosynthesis. They need sunlight. They need some space. And they need water. These different factors are broken up into two different groups, biotic factors and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are factors that are either alive or they were once alive. Kind of tough. Abiotic means that they are not alive and they will never be alive. What are the abiotic factors that we are going to provide for our seeds? Air. Air is not alive. Sunlight. Sunlight is not alive. And water. Water is not alive either. Now I have soil written down here as well. Soil could be classified as both biotic or abiotic. Soil could be biotic depending on the source. We know that inside of soil there may be dead plants, dead leaves, dead roots, dead animals making it biotic. But if the soil has none of those things in it, then it would be abiotic. Now today, we're going to do an experiment that asks the question, will these seeds grow taller? Will they grow better? Will they have more leaves? Will they be all around healthier? if we help them make their food. How can we do that? Well, I told you that they make sugar through a process called photosynthesis. And we have to give them water. So what if we gave them sugar water? Will that make them grow better? We're gonna do an experiment to find out. Let's get started. Let's go over some of the items you will need for this lab. 
inside of your enrichment bag, you will have soil that is provided for you, two cups, packet of seeds, and a teaspoon. You will need to provide water, sugar, two large containers, a mixing utensil, a syringe, or a tablespoon measure. A syringe or a tablespoon. Is labeled. The first thing I have done is labeled my two containers, regular water and sugar water. I am going to measure 500 milliliters of water into each of my beakers. If you do not have something that measures in milliliters, 500 milliliters is the equivalent of 16 ounces. To my regular water, I'm not going to do anything. But to create my sugar water, I'm going to use my teaspoon measure with the sugar, and I'm going to add six teaspoons of sugar. Then using my popsicle stick, I'm just going to mix well. And once the sugar is completely dissolved, then it is ready to use. And you can use the same container of sugar water this entire week. And if you need to make more, you can just go ahead and follow this recipe. Six teaspoons of sugar for every 500 milliliters of water. Next, I have labeled my two cups where I'm going to plant my seeds in. Cup A is no sugar, cup B gets sugar. But the first thing I'm going to do is add my first biotic factor, which is the soil. I want the cup filled three quarters of the way with soil. And I'm going to do the same to cup B. Making sure both of my cups have exactly the same amount of soil. Now, just to clarify, I did say that my soil is biotic because this soil was gathered from my backyard. And as you can see, there are biotic factors like a dead leaf inside of it. So I am sure there are other plant and animal parts inside of my cup. The next thing I'm going to do is take my pea seeds and I want to plant four seeds in each cup, making sure they are spaced out. Using a popsicle stick or even your finger, you just want to gently bury the seeds under the soil. So just to recap so far, both cups have the same amount of soil inside of them. They both have the same number of pea seeds the next thing I need to do is add water. I'm using my syringe and I'm going to add 30 milliliters of water to both of these cups. But now the one thing that is different here is cup A is getting regular water and cup B is getting sugar water. Going to take my syringe and 
And I'm going to do the same for cup B, the same amount of water. However, this is sugar water. Both of these cups are going to go in a safe spot and a sunny spot. I need to give it another abiotic factor, which is the sun, and I will observe the two cups and check to see if the plants are growing at the same rate and if they are, if one is growing better than the other. The next thing you need to do is save your water and sugar water because you will need to give 30 milliliters of water every third day to these cups. Let's go over what we did in this lab. I planted pea seeds in two cups. Both cups got the same amount of soil and they got the same amount of seeds and they're going to get the same amount of sunlight and the same amount of air, but there was one thing different. The one thing that was different here, which is my independent variable, was the type of water I used. Cup A got regular water and cup B got sugar water. That's the one thing that we are changing in this lab. And the dependent variable is going to be how well my plant is going to grow. We'll check for height, we'll check for leaves, the number of leaves, how green it is, and see after 10 days if the sugar water has an effect on plant growth. Quickly to review the biotic and abiotic factors. In this case, my biotic factors were the soil and the seeds. Remember the seeds are alive. And my soil had material in there that was once alive. And the abiotic factors are the sun, the air, the water. Now your soil may be biotic or abiotic. You may not know, and that's okay. We're going to put both of these cups right next to each other in a safe and sunny spot. And we are going to give them water, 30 milliliters of water every three days. And if you need to adjust that, you can go ahead and adjust that. If you see that your soil is extra dry or it's extra moist, as long as you give, as long as you give the same amount of water to each cup. Different areas have different humidity and different temperatures. So you may have to adjust the amount of water depending on where your plants are. We're going to check these in about 10 days and go over our results. Before you get started, make sure to fill out your hypothesis. Now the question we're answering today is, Will sugar water make my plants grow better? Go ahead, get started. Now that 10 days have passed, I've actually waited a little bit more than 10 days. I have both sets of my plants here. Now remember, plant one got four seeds with regular water. Plant two got four seeds with sugar water. And let's look at our results. This is not at all what I expected. I can't even believe what's happened in about two weeks. The first obvious observation is, well, plant B didn't grow at all. My hypothesis was that plant B would grow better than plant A. I thought it would be taller, I thought that it would be 
definitely filled with more leaves. And that's not the case at all. Now plant A that just got regular water has all four seeds that not only have sprouted, but they've started to grow. And they all have leaves and they look nice and green and tall. Plant B has nothing. Looks like it was starting to sprout, but never took off. To record my observations, I'm going to need a ruler, pencil, and my data sheet. The first thing I'm going to do is check the height. One plant is 24 centimeters. Another one is 22 centimeters. Third one is 17 centimeters. And the other one is 10 centimeters. I'm also going to record the number of leaves on each plant. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 leaves. And my first, my second one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen leaves. My third plant has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen leaves. And my fourth plant, notice the leaves are much bigger on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen leaves. Wow. It's the shortest one, but had the most leaves. And the leaves on here are nice and big and looks like they are full grown. What you can also do is draw what your plants look like. Now, plant B can't record a height, can't record leaf color, can't count the leaves because there are none. I'm just going to write no growth. And again, you can go ahead and draw and label what you see. Now let's talk about what happened here. Why are our results so strange? This is not what I expected. We talked about photosynthesis. The plants use the sun to make the sugars they need for the plant to grow. Now we bypassed the step. We gave the plant sugar and helped it grow. But my plant did not grow at all with the sugar water. Many different reasons why that could be. Now there's not just one type of sugar, there's many different types of sugar. I gave my plant white sugar, and that's not the type of sugar that plants use. The other thing I did was, I started the sprouting process with the sugar water. Maybe it would have been different had I sprouted the seeds first with regular water and then gave it sugar water because we don't see, even see much sprouting here. And it could be that plants just don't want any extra help. They like to make it themselves. And any extra help will actually hurt the plants and not allow any growth. But what was important here was to understand the variables. The independent variable here was the water, the type of water, regular water, sugar water, and the dependent variable was plant growth. How tall they grew, the number of leaves, and how green it was. We also learned about biotic versus abiotic factors. We had 
the water and sugar water, both as abiotic factors. The sun was an abiotic factor. Air is an abiotic factor. The biotic factors here were the seeds, which are alive, and the soil. Go ahead, record your own observations.